In our Sunday School lesson this week, we are going to be taking a look at the resurrection of Jesus. We are also going to be diving into believing in the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus, as you have heard me say time and time again, according to scripture and according to what I truly do believe, he is a stone of stumbling. Many people struggle with having faith in believing in Jesus. There is a struggle to believe in his birth. There is a struggle to believe in his resurrection. Why is that? Why is it that it seems that more people are quicker to believe in aliens, in aliens that they have never seen, than to believe that God gave the world his only begotten son who gave his life on Calvary for us and then he was risen on the third day. Why do we struggle with having faith in the resurrection of Christ who died for our sins? So that is what we're gonna be taking a look at here in our Sunday School lesson this week. Let us remember where we left off at in our Sunday School lesson last week. When Jesus was crucified on the cross and when he died, let us remember that there were many who watched, there were many who mocked, there were many who humiliated Jesus while he was hanging on the cross. And when he died, we are told in scripture that they, they beat their breasts, they turned around and they walked away. The show, it was over for them. But we will remember that there were many who were there who followed Jesus, that they watched from afar, they watched his crucifixion. The women, they were there who had followed him. And then John and his gospel said that he was there. And Jesus even spoke to John while he was hanging on the cross and while he was dying there. And I said in last week's lesson that there was a lot of sorrow from, from that crowd of followers that were looking at Jesus because their friend had just died. And I said last week that if they knew what we knew, that they would have been rejoicing in that moment because at the cross, there is victory. There is victory for all of us who are of faith because Jesus said, God gave the world his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Salvation for us, it was sealed at the cross as I said in my sermon last week. So here in our Sunday School lesson today, where we're taking a look at the 24th chapter of Luke's gospel, we'll see there in the first verse that there were certain women that was going to the tomb. The, the name of some of the women that was going to the tomb is actually shown to us there in the 10th verse. If you wanna skip down and glance at that 10th verse, you can see some of the names there. But we're told that they were going there on the first day of the week, that being the day after Sabbath. They weren't allowed to do any kind of work on the Sabbath. And so they went the first moment they, they could on the first day of the week, which was Sunday, they were going to the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. That's where Jesus' body lay. And we're told there that they were carrying spices with them as well. Now, I often joke about this moment in scripture. I often joke that the women, they were going to the tomb with those spices to give Jesus a proper burial, if you will, because the men, they messed it up. Joseph and Nicodemus, they got the body of Jesus after he was crucified and they had to actually rush to, to get him in the tomb before sundown on the day that Jesus was crucified because at sundown, that would begin Sabbath. And again, they weren't allowed to do any work on Sabbath. And so the women on the first day of the week, early in the morning, they were headed out to the tomb with those spices because they knew that they could do a better job than the men did. And so they were going to the tomb to give Jesus a proper burial, if you will. And so we're told there in the second verse that as they approached the tomb, they found that the stone covering the entrance to the tomb had been rolled away. This had to be a very concerning moment for the women who were going to the tomb there. And so we're told there in the third verse that they went inside of the tomb to see the body of Jesus, but there was no body. And then there in the fourth verse, we see that they were confused as to what had happened to Jesus's body. Did somebody take it? Did somebody come in? Did someone steal the body of Jesus? And, and so we'll see there in that verse that as they stood there in their confusion, they were then visited by two quote unquote men who stood in shining garments. Now we know that these two were angels. That is what is said in the other gospels that it was angels that, that were standing there before the women. If you take a look at the 28th chapter of Matthew's gospel in the second verse, you see there in that second verse that Matthew, he said that there was even an earthquake over in the morning and that an angel, maybe one of those two that was there with the women, 
had rolled away the stone from the entrance to the tomb. So we'll see there in the fifth verse that these angels, that they came with an announcement to the women there. They asked the women first a question. They asked, why do you seek the living among the dead? That is, it's a very powerful statement that, that I want to come back to and talk about in the end. Again, notice the question there. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He said there, the angel said there, continuing in the sixth verse, they said, he is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. So again, we see it there where the idea of Jesus rising again from the dead, it was simply not something that was on the mind of the women that went to the tomb. They thought for a certainty that Jesus' body would be there in the tomb. Why did they think that? Well, they thought that because, hey, that was the logical thing to, to think, right? Now, they had seen Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. They had seen Jesus, how, how he could heal the sick. But Jesus, he was alive, right? They could see that with their eyes, right? And so now he is dead, right? And, and who is it that would be able to raise Jesus from the dead? And so they figured for a certainty that they would go to the tomb and that they would see Jesus, they would see his dead body in the tomb. But the angels again said, why do you seek the living among the dead? He isn't here, he is risen. Do you remember what it was that he taught you? Do you remember what it was that he predicted about his death? Do you remember that he said that he will rise on the third day? Do you remember? Again, when we talk about faith, is faith about what you see or is faith about what you remember? Think about that for a moment here. So we'll see there in the eighth verse that they began to remember and then they returned from the tomb and they shared with the 11. Let us remember that it was only 11 disciples now, only 11 of the closest disciples. Judas, he had betrayed Jesus and Judas, he had killed himself. And so the disciples will see there in the 11th verse, the disciples, they didn't believe a word that the women had shared with them, that, that angels had spoke to them, that they rolled away the stone from, from the tomb and that Jesus's body wasn't in the tomb, but that he wasn't dead and that he was risen. Jesus' closest followers, the 11, they thought that the women were telling them a fairy tale. We'll see there in that scripture. So Peter, probably wanting to see with his own eyes once again, we'll see there in the 12th verse that he went out to the tomb. And I want you to understand that he didn't go out to the tomb on his own. Over in the 20th chapter of John's gospel, you see what John, he tells us that he went to the tomb as well. He even beat Peter to the tomb and he waited there at the tomb for Peter. And so when Peter got to the tomb, John, he tells us in his gospel that, that Peter went into the tomb first and, and he saw Jesus's grave clothes lying there in the tomb. And then John, he tells us that they saw the handkerchief that would have been over Jesus's face they saw that it had been folded and that it was lying separate from the clothes. So, so what does that mean? Do you remember our Sunday school lesson just a couple of weeks ago where we took a look at Jesus and how he raised Lazarus from the dead? And you, you should remember that when Jesus, when he called Lazarus forth, he could barely come forth. He was still tied up and wrapped up in his grave clothes. And Jesus said, loose him from those grave clothes. Whereas with Jesus here at his resurrection, he didn't need any help to get out of his grave clothes, which is very interesting. He would have been wrapped in grave clothes. Why didn't he need any help to get out of the grave clothes? Well, he was risen and there was a transformation that had happened with Jesus. Yeah, he was physically present in this world, but when Jesus, when he was risen from the dead, he would seemingly vanish and, and reappear wherever it was that, that he chose to be. And so his grave clothes was just lying there. And then with his handkerchief that would have been co covering his face, 
with it folded up, it showed that there was no sign of any kind of foul play. There was no, no signs of his body being taken, being stolen and, and being removed from the tomb. And so this was a curiosity for, for Peter, but John, he tells us in his gospel that what he saw, what he seen in the grave when he looked in and when he was in there, he believed is what John tells us. But again, believing in the resurrection of Christ, it, it's a difficult one. It was a stumbling block for those who closely followed Jesus and, and it's still a stumbling block today for, for many. And again, the question is, why is that? Why is it a struggle for, for us, for many to believe in the resurrection of Christ? I believe that it comes down to these, our eyes and, and our, our way of thinking. You know, we, there are many people today who believe that they are, are open to believing in anything, but in actuality, they aren't as open as they would like to think. We have to get past, we have to get beyond the worldly mindset in order to be able to believe in the Lord in his fullness, in his entirety to be able to understand and to be able to believe that, that God, first off, he created all of this, all of what we see, all of what we cannot see, that God loves us. That, that is something that is huge. It is a very big hurdle for many people to believe. They may be able to believe that there is a higher power, a higher authority, but the fact that, that God loves us, that he cares about us, is something that many people, again, also struggle with as well. And then for God to give himself, because that's who Jesus is. Jesus is God in the flesh, right? And so for God to give himself, to be able to die, and then to die for us, it is a struggle for, for many people to believe. But again, we cannot find the living among the dead. You are not ever going to find the Lord with a worldly mindset. The worldly mindset is a dead mindset. It will go nowhere. And I hope that makes sense to you. In order for you to find the Lord, in order for you to find the only begotten son, and in order for you to find everlasting life, your heart must be open. It must be open to receiving the Lord. It must be open to the spirit. You're never going to understand anything of the spirit if you close yourself off from the spirit. Again, I hope all of that, that makes sense to you. You're not going to find the living among the dead is what the angels said to, to the women. And I believe that still holds true for all of us today. If we are in a search for real life, and if you are in search of the Lord, you must open your heart up to the spirit. And this is shown more to us as we take a look there at the 30th verse where Jesus having walked with those who are on the road to Emmaus, those two men, he entered into their home and he sat at their table. He took bread, he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to the two. And scripture tells us that their eyes, they began to open. So these two, there were two men who were making their way to the village of Emmaus. And these two men, as they were traveling, they were joined by another who happened to be the resurrected Jesus. But again, their eyes weren't necessarily open to this being the resurrected Jesus. Even as they traveled along the way and they spoke with them, they could not recognize that they were walking with Jesus because again, their eyes weren't open. And again, I want you to understand that we're not talking about these. We're not talking about these eyes. We're talking about their spirit. Their spirit wasn't open to, to it possibly being Jesus. And because their, their spirit wasn't open to it possibly being the resurrected Jesus. Even though they had heard from the women, they were present to hear the women say that Jesus, he was alive, that he was living, that he had risen. Because their spirit wasn't quite open to it, they couldn't recognize that they were walking with Jesus. However, when they sat at the table with him, when they made it to their home, and when he took the bread, when he broke it, when he blessed it, and when he gave it to them, again, scripture said that their eyes began to open. And we'll see there in that 32nd verse that, that Jesus, after he had vanished away, they spoke to each other and they said amongst each other, 
Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scripture to us? And after they said these things among themselves, we'll see there in the 33rd verse that these two, they immediately made their way back to Jerusalem because they had a word to share with the 11th and anyone else who may have been present there. So these men, in the end, they were able to go back and they were able to believe what the women, what the women came from the tomb believing, what John came back from the tomb believing as well. And the reason why they were able to do this, the reason why they were able to be some of the first ones who ministered, right, along with the women, that Jesus is risen. They were able to do this full of faith because, again, their heart burned. And I want to be very careful when I say that because I don't want you to think that God is going to give you this burning feeling. We, we have to be very careful with those, those feelings that we get because even the devil uh, can give you those feelings. But again, their heart was open to, to perceiving. Their spirit was open to perceiving. And so that's what it takes for us to be able to believe in the Lord, to be able to believe that he gave us his only begotten son, to be able to believe in the birth and the resurrection of Christ. Our heart must be open. If your heart is shut off, if your heart is closed off from believing in the Lord, you're never going to believe. You're never going to believe in the birth, you're never going to believe in the resurrection of Christ, and you are going to miss out. So my word of encouragement for all of you today who, who may lack faith in the Lord is to open up your spirit. Open yourselves up to the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to enter in and allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in you because the Holy Spirit serves in a role of being the helper who leads us into all truth who leads us unto what is holy, unto what is righteous, who leads us to salvation. So open up your hearts today because he is risen. And again, because he is risen and because he ascended, we have the Holy Spirit, who is our biggest help, who leads us into knowing this truth. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you will take something away from this lesson, that you will apply it to yourself and that you will share it with someone somewhere. And I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday School lesson next week. Make sure that you're following this channel so that you can get the next notification for next week's Sunday School lesson so that you don't miss it, so that you don't miss the Sunday School lesson, the sermons, the Bible studies, or the Food for Thoughts. Make sure that you're following this channel today.